हरि ओम इन दिस पर्टिकुलर सीरीज वी हैव नेम्ड इट एज मेडिटेशन इज बिकॉज देर सीम्स टू बी सेवरल आइडियाज अबाउट इट इन दी वेदांत शास्त्र थ्रू आवर वेदिक स्क्रिप्चर्स उपनिषद्स इन पर्टिकुलर देर हैज बीन वन यूनिफॉर्म थॉट अबाउट इट एंड दोज हु आर इंटरप्रेटिंग इट देर शुड नॉट बी अ डिस्क्रिपेंसी इन द understanding or evaluation of it so all those methods and processes we have seen are under the umbrella of karma bhakti upasana japa pranayama all these methods they help purify the mind they help fine tune that mind so that it is available for the meditation to happen for a meditator the clarity is of utmost importance to understand what is it that is being meditated upon who is it that is meditating and what is the prayojana benefit of this meditative process if these steps are understood then it becomes clear then it becomes easy for us to grasp and be in that path to meditate upon that which is to be abided in with clarity without any ambiguity so today we will look into what is that which we should meditate upon the abidance in one's own nature if it is called meditation what is my nature has to be understood very clearly so guru ji in this beautiful book dhyana swarupam he says swarupam sachidanandam vijanan swatmano budhah तिष्ठत्येवं सदा योगी स्वरूपे नान्यथा <coughs> स्वरूपम सच्चिदानंदम विजानन स्वात्मनो बुधः टू अंडरस्टैंड स्वरूप अवर ओन ट्रू नेचर the core of our own being as what as satchit ananda vijanan to know it as satchit ananda sat existence chit consciousness ananda bliss to understand it as swatmanah as my core of being that i am the core of being and to always remain in this illumining awareful perspective and nothing else deviates us from this abidance that state of being is called meditation or dhyanam now when this instruction is given first we have to contemplate upon 
do a thorough churning process manana understand manana as as gurudev used to very beautifully put it you have a cup of coffee and they have added sugar in it now when you take the first sip and you find it bitter is the sugar not there in that cup yes of course it is there but then the sweetness of that sugar is experienced by this individual only when they mix it thoroughly well similarly these instructions or these pointers that have been given now have to be contemplated upon in its thoroughness so what is this manana we have to now ascertain the understanding of this pointer <clears throat> so first we will look into what is the nature of nature when i say that my true nature the nature of this nature can be put in broadly two classifications स्वाभाविक स्वरूप एंड नैमित्तिक स्वरूप टेक्निकल वर्ड्स बट आई एक्सप्लेन इट स्वाभाविक स्वरूप इज दैट वेर देर इज इट इज पॉइंटिंग टूवर्ड्स द एसेंशियल नेचर हाउ डज वन अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज एसेंशियल नेचर दैट विदउट विच दैट वस्तु does not remain any more that vastu that which makes it that vastu like from fire if you take the heat away it is no more fire just a tangible example given that which cannot be given up that which cannot be accumulated or acquired aheyam anupadeyam that which neither can be rejected nor can be taken up so there is no such transaction it is and to be in that nature it is not a burden again a very tangible example you are carrying say a water bottle or something with you as long as it is there outside you feel burdened by it but when you drink it and it is now assimilated inside i don't feel the burden of it it has become one with this similarly or another example the nature of water is to be in its liquid state and being in that liquid state is not a burden for water similarly the swabhavik swarupa is not a burden now in contrast to that is the naimittik swarupa wherein these qualities can be acquired retained lost reduced gained or regained for example water cools down when there is no fire element it becomes cold when placed in the refrigeration so the temperature is gained the temperature is lost the temperature aspect of it is the naimittik swarupa lakshana of that vastu why it can be gained it can be retained it can be lost it can be regained so now with these two understandings 
we all have a generic idea as to what am I, who am I. Now, when we do the Vishleshana, Manana, the contemplative process of evaluation, Vishleshana, then we have to understand what am I considering myself as from these two perspectives. Whatever I am considering myself as, which has this Naimittika Swarupa, which can be gained, lost, regained, meaning it is an attribute, an attribute cannot be my nature. So we have to evaluate that. Evaluation to what perspective or to what level that the understanding and clarity is not just at the intellectual level, but at a conviction level where it cannot be shaken out. That understanding cannot be shaken out. So now we have to look into what do we consider as the self. We consider usually as this body. Living here in the US, there is a lot of junk mail that comes. One such mail said, after you die, your body needs to be given the dignity of rest. So here we offer a seaside view in a nice beautiful hill where your body will be rested and for eternity. I had to laugh when people are striving forward to have a certain amount of dignity in existence while you are alive. You are talking about dignity of that body after that which is enlivening that body has already gone. You, the you-ness in there has gone. So what is left behind is just a bunch of matter. But we are identified with this matter so thoroughly, so entrenched in it, that I consider it as myself. Now with this Naimittika Swarupa and Swabhavika Swarupa, is considering myself as this body a Naimittika Swarupa or a, a Swabhavika Swarupa, we have to evaluate it. We pretty soon realize that the body is something where I can acquire because I was born in a certain size and shape. Then I grew to a certain size and shape and then again I shrunk in old age, it happens, you start losing muscle, you start gaining muscle. So that which can be lost, gained. And the funny part is, several times we have seen, like people when they are in serious condition in ICU, they, you know, we have seen people that donate, you know, kidney, blood, eyes. So when this donation happens, a part of me is taken out of what I consider myself as is taken out. Do I cease to exist? In wars, people lose their limbs. Do I cease to exist? No. I continue to be. So this body which I am considering myself so strongly, is it a burden? <laughs> Those of us who have put on weight, we know. Those of us who are rapidly losing weight, for whatever illness or sickness has caused it, it becomes a burden. So if it is my Swabhavika Swarupa, it should not become a burden. It should not be something that I can be gaining or losing. So how should we look at the body as just as a upakarana, as a tool that I function through 
rather than thinking functioning as but i function through it now the next layer that i usually consider myself are the internal equipment which is full of thoughts emotions feelings ideas convictions can these thoughts feelings emotions convictions ideas be gained and lost of course it's a day to day experience moment to moment experience can i live without them every day we go through that experience called sleep where the processing is completely come to an end and guruji is to say you know people can live without food for in a few days without water for maybe a day without breathing for few moments but without thinking probably lifelong there are moments wherein when we are shocked the thought ceases we don't react respond participate we are stupefied like in a blank zone not just in the deep sleep but also during the waking time we find ourselves stunned so that you know that thought process which can be gained lost acquired is it a burden yes when there is a secret that you have to maintain it is a burden when you have done something that guilt is riding you that's a burden I man i can go on there are several formats of this which we burden ourselves with and become so subjective at that point that we seldom see ourselves separating ourselves from there and we go through the ups and downs so that also is not then what is this awareness now pay attention that because of whose presence this body mind intellect every limb every process functions that which enables this functioning i wouldn't jump to call it as a power or a energy source energy is still a subtlest format of matter so we don't call that as power or energy but that which empowers that which channelizes this energy in a meaningful way that whose presence is sufficient to channelize that awarefulness in order to understand or in order to know this awareness do i need my buddhi no buddhi is a place where there is a confusion about this conviction the clarity is required but is that buddhi's processing required to know it so to understand that let me take this example if you light a lamp before that lamp can illumine anything else what does it first illumine its own presence similarly this all pervading conscious principle illumines illumination is its very nature it does not require the buddhi to illumine it that which illumines that buddhi so more about it in extensive practice now that we identify that this is not the definition of self and this is the swabhavika swarupa of the self having understood it how does one train with this body mind and intellect to purify it fine tune it disidentify it disidentify with it and then to turn towards this source and to abide in it how does one do that that we will see in our next until then hari om